It's an obsession that seems to go beyond just finding uh, wealth. It's become a game, a challenge to them. Captain Kidd, Blackbeard, uh, Henry Morgan, they're all supposed to have been buried their treasure or buried treasure on Oak Island. That really, whatever you find down there is priceless. Hello and welcome to Land and Sea. I'm Tom Murphy. Off the south shore of Nova Scotia lies a tiny island that's long believed to be the burial site of pirate treasure. Since 1795, Oak Island has been visited by many groups, from United States presidents to the Hollywood elite. Thousands of people have come to Oak Island. They all have the same obsession, finding the buried treasure in what's become known as the Money Pit. Danny Henniger has been fascinated by the puzzle since he was a boy. The first time I ever heard anything at all but the story of Oak Island was probably in the 1960s. My dad had a speedboat and he brought me out to Oak Island where we landed in Smith's Cove and uh, walked up over the shore and, and over the hill and I remember dad saying to me, watch out for the holes son, you don't want to fall down any of the holes. He even conducted tours of the island when he was a teenager. We know that uh, because of Donald Daniel's discoveries on the island, that's what started the treasure hunt. And what he found was a clearing, and in that clearing was a large oak tree. Suspended from that oak tree was a tackle block, such as you'd find on a sailing ship. And at the base of, in the, uh, of the tree in the ground was a 13 foot in diameter depression. Uh, he and two friends of his, John Smith and Anthony Vaughn, started digging. Tales of pirates on the East Coast fired up their imaginations. The boys gave up digging at a depth of 30 feet. But in the following 200 years, more groups continued their work. larger syndicate came in, it's 1804. Uh, they dug down to 90 feet, finding these uh, oak platforms every uh, 10 feet, finding nothing and, uh, until they hit a, uh, at the 90 foot level, hit a, uh, a stone that had strange markings on it. The stone was brought to the surface and none of them could interpret it. One later theory suggests that the inscription means 40 feet below, two million pounds are buried. They come back the next morning after they take the stone out and the pit had 60 feet of water in it, right up to uh, about 32 feet from the top, which was the level of Mahone Bay. They tried to bail it out and uh, they couldn't. It uh, was later discovered that the uh, bottom of the muddy pit was hooked up to the, uh, to the sea, both on the South Shore Cove and the uh, Smith Cove uh, by a man-made tunnel. So it was a booby trap. And it's that booby trap that has uh, thwarted everybody for over 200 years. The mysterious stone, which now can't be found, and the booby trap intensified the curiosity for the treasure. Interesting clues were always being dug up, keeping the dream alive. Uh, at 171 feet in 1897, they found a piece of parchment that Harvard University said was sheepskin parchment, upon which was written uh, uh, writing in India ink done with a quill pen. Former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt caught the bug and participated in the hunt. So did Hollywood icons like Errol Flynn and John Wayne. Six men have lost their lives while searching for the treasure. When this man fell down a shaft, others tried to save him. They were all overcome by fumes. Four died in this incident alone.
Throughout the years, the searchers dug deeper and deeper. In the 1970s, a group reached 200 feet down. They discovered what they believed to be underground chambers. Sometimes the drill would go down, say, to about 170 feet, and uh, then it would hit maybe eight inches of wood, and uh, it was usually oak wood, and that would hit a void of six to eight feet, and it'd be back into either earth or bedrock again. So it seemed to indicate a tunnel of some sort. So they had this wood carbon dated, and the uh, results came out to, uh, most of the carbon dating came out to 1575, plus or minus 85 years. So it showed that uh, this project had been done probably about 450 years ago, if not more. The first time I heard about Oak Island was stories from my grandmother and mother who told me that there's this island in the South Shore that people have been digging for centuries and are still digging and that pirates may have hit, hidden something there or not. Ideas about what could be buried in the money pit soon began to circulate. Some were more believable than others. There are countless theories about what's hidden on Oak Island. They all begin with pirate treasure, of course. That's the, sort of the folklore. Even though pirates didn't bury treasure, everybody believes they did and that they buried it in magical ways. Any big pirate you can name, Captain Kidd, Blackbeard, uh, Henry Morgan, on and on. Pirates who never came to this region, they're all supposed to have been buried, buried uh, um, with their treasure or buried treasure on Oak Island. The theories of Oak Island run from the ridiculous to the sublime. Some of them are absolutely foolish, in my humble opinion. Some of them have, uh, have something to them. Um, and they run from everything. And there's one gentleman who suggested that there's an inverted pyramid buried under Oak Island. There's a gentleman in Ireland right now who believes that there's a colony of leprechauns living underneath of Oak Island. The more serious ones, though, really have to do with things like the Templar Knights. There's a lot of people believe that the Templar Knights are involved with Oak Island, going way back to the time when Henry Sinclair supposedly was here in Nova Scotia in about 1398. Some people claim it's the Spanish who brought their treasures up that they stole or took from the, uh, the Central American uh, natives and uh, deposited on Oak Island. But there's one bit of evidence that's actually vaguely interesting, and that's bits of coconut fiber. Uh, people have claimed to have found them in large quantities on the beach. Some of them claim to have found them in the money pit, although none of them kept records about where they found them. But uh, clearly there's been a lot of fiber found on Oak Island. And there has been some scientific testing that indicates it's coconut fiber, which is kind of interesting. Coconut trees don't grow in Nova Scotia, obviously, so where did it come from? These theories sparked an international flurry of discussion. Several books have been written about Oak Island's treasure, but every attempt to get to the bottom of the Oak Island mystery has resulted in time, money, and lives lost. When we return, meet the man who has protected the island for the last 35 years. The mystery of Oak Island, located off the south shore of Nova Scotia, is internationally known. I have been fascinated by Oak Island ever since uh, 1970. Uh, at that time I was uh, working for the Wall Street Journal as a, uh, a feature writer in New York. I was sent up uh, to Nova Scotia to uh, do a story on the fishing industry. I was in the uh, motel bar and uh, having a beer and there was only one other patron there and that was this fellow sitting a couple of stools away. We started talking and I noticed he had an American accent. I asked him what he was doing there. He said, uh, looking for treasure. And I thought, oh yeah, right. <laughs> and, and he said, yeah, no, I'm a treasure hunter. And, uh, and uh, he said he was from Florida. Anyway, it turned out it was Dan Blankenship. All of the equipment that we have on the island, we designed ourselves. Dan Blankenship is part owner of some uh, of the land plots on Oak Island. And no one had to come down here and dump it. 
as you can see, the side rails. He's been searching here since 1974. First time I heard about Oak Island, I read it in the January issue of Reader's Digest. It's only a short article, maybe five pages long. And I read it, and then I handed it to my wife, and uh, I said, read it. And she did, and she, in so many words, she says, uh, so what? And I said, uh, as near as I can remember, I said, well, I, I believe there's treasure on Oak Island, and I believe that I'm going to be instrumental in finding it or discovering it. Broken hearts as well as Dan Blankenship was so excited about the treasure of Oak Island that he moved from his sunny home in Florida to Nova Scotia. In 1974, he dug a major shaft, but the work was halted because of heavy rains. You're never satisfied with uh, anything that you do here on the island unless you complete it satisfactory. Do you still think this shaft might um, be a part of the key to unlocking the mystery? Oh, there's no question about it. Blankenship has seen partners come and go over the last 35 years of his search. There have been so many excavations that the original location of the money pit is uncertain. And I, I suspect that the location is probably uh, at or close to the original uh, so-called money pit area. To this day, no treasure has been found. But Blankenship is still convinced he will find something. Who's to say that a bunch of captains didn't get together and say, hey, we're taking all the risk and we're sailing these ships uh, heavily laden with gold and silver uh, back to Spain and given to and adding to the uh, king's coffers and uh, uh, let's start stashing some of this away for our own use. I like the idea that a bunch of Spanish captains got together and decided one for the king and two for me. <laughs> This past summer, Blankenship was forced to clear-cut a large area on Oak Island because of a beetle infestation. Then, he happened upon some mysterious rocks, which he believes are linked to the island's secrets. These are some of the monuments, I call them, uh, that we've located when we were clear-cutting this area here. And in doing that, we located several of these, uh, what I think are monument and they more or less most of this particular type is uh, sh triangular shaped and they're deep they're in the ground and they they don't move I'll kick this one just to show you that they're solid and they go down quite deep up over over here is another one that I believe matches up with this one here and we haven't learned the significance of what these markers mean yet, but in time, we will. Whatever the treasure might be, the bottom line is that no one has been able to overcome the so-called booby trap of Oak Island's money pit. But at McGill University in Montreal,